Howdy ho, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff with iDownload Blog. We are, of course, talking about Oxo for iPad. Today is Oxo Day, obviously. It releases today. It should be available right now on Cydia for you to download. And as you know, Oxo is an app switcher replacement for your iOS device. There's an iPhone version, and now there is, yes, of course, an iPad version of Oxo. You get those full screen previews, uh, the app switcher transformed into something that is a lot more functional in my opinion and I think you guys are going to really like the iPad version of Oxo. It's been a long time coming but it was worth the wait and uh, as you see there you can use swipe gestures to dismiss uh, to close out apps uh, just with the swipe like that. Super easy to use. You can also use a tap and hold gesture to close out of multiple apps, all the apps at one time. So just tap and hold on any of the app icons and you can close out all the apps from the multitasking tray in one fell swoop. So it's really nice to close out of everything if you wanna do that. Uh, you can close out of individual apps if you wanna do that. You can also close out of multiple apps using uh, multi, multi finger swipe gestures and you can literally grab two or three apps at the same time, swipe down and close out of all of those apps at once. Now you also have redesigned music controls with Oxo, and if you've used the iPhone version, you're very familiar to how this all works. Of course you have your standard transport controls to play, pause, go to the previous track, just by tapping the previous button, um, and you can go back, or you can go to the next track by tapping on the skip button, and you have your brightness controls there, you have your airplay functionality, you have your volume slider for adjusting the volume, and you also have a nice big album artwork photo. You can just tap the little album artwork in the uh, left hand corner there and it blows it up into a big iPad view, iPad worthy view of uh, all your album artwork for your nail playing track. If you tap the music icon associated with the music player that you're using, it will open up that player as well. Now let's talk about toggles, because if you notice, this is actually a little bit different than it is on the iPhone version. You don't swipe over the whole page. You just swipe over on this section here, this frame of the page, and you get your toggles. So you can maintain your music controls and the toggles on the same page, and you can swipe over, swipe back just like that. So you have all your toggles there. You can have up to seven toggles showing at once. And of course you can swipe up if you wanna uh, display additional toggles if you have others enabled to sh display or show in the settings for Oxo. So lots of toggles displayed at once. I like the fact that you have the transport controls displayed at all times when you swipe over, uh, even when the toggles are displayed. And the toggles work just like they do on the iPhone version, of course, you enable them just by tapping them. And the nice thing about this is that this uses the new flip switch toggle framework, which was of course a collaboration between Ryan Patrick and the folks behind also. So you, if you tap and hold on one of those toggles, of course, that will also bring up the page associated with the toggle in question, if possible. So that is pretty much also in a nutshell. Now we're gonna really delve into some of the settings for also for iPad. And just like the iPhone version of Oxo, you get this nice user guide which tells you all about uh, the Oxo jailbreak tweak. It gives you information on how to use it. It even is updated with the flip switch toggles, which is now required uh, for those toggles that I talked about earlier. Uh, and you just have a nice rundown of every section, how to use Oxo. Uh, describes it in very uh, good detail. So I highly recommend if you haven't used the iPhone version, get familiar with Oxo for iPad by using the user guide. Now the first configuration uh, setup page that you'll, you'll find here is for the toggles. Now you see I have the toggles page first option disabled. So I still have, when I swipe over my music information, I have the scrubber where I can scrub the music. But if I turn on toggles page first and swipe over, it displays the toggles page first as expected. Now there's also another option here under toggles page first. If we select unless media is playing, turn that on. Now media is currently playing. If I swipe over, it displays media first, even though I have toggles page first enabled because media is now playing. Now if I disable the unless media is playing toggle and I swipe over, it shows the toggles page first, as you would expect. Now let's talk about all the various toggles here. There are 14 toggles in total and they can all be rearranged using the little grabber handles and they can be hidden if you drag them under the hidden section or visible if you drag them under the visible section. Now 
with 14 toggles, up to seven toggles can be displayed at once. So you can see that works out pretty well. Uh, you have two rows of toggles with seven each if you have the maximum enabled for the toggles per row and all the toggles enabled. But of course, you can change the amount of toggles per row if you want to do that. You can change it to four, five, six, or change it up to seven. I personally like seven. I think it looks great, but four works as well as you see here. And they're just divided up three rows of four, and then you have a row of two for 14 toggles. Now, as I mentioned, Auxo uses that new flip switch framework for its toggles. Now, that's a nice thing. It makes it much easier for developers to implement toggles into their tweaks, but it does come with a caveat, at least for Auxo for iPad, because the iPhone version actually included advanced options for things like Respring and Flashlight. Obviously, you don't have a flashlight on your iPad, but for Respring, you do lose some of the functionality from the iPhone version. You no longer have the tap and hold function for the Respring to allow you to assign Respring to things like Reboot or uh, Power Off or Safe Mode or Do Nothing even. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you're an also for iPhone user and you're looking for that functionality. The good news is that Flip Switch is an independent framework and hence it can be updated at any time to include additional functions and that will probably be done. Now let's discuss Auxo's second set of preferences, the prompt options. The prompt options allow you to display or hide the prompts that come up when you try to close out of various apps. I'm gonna show you how this works here. First of all, you have ask on remove all. That is enabled by default. So if I open up Auxo and I use the remove all gesture, the single tap and hold on any of the app icons or any of the apps, you see this, do you want to remove all apps from the multitasking tray? That is the prompt to make sure that you actually want to close out of all apps. Otherwise, all the apps will close. Now, if there's a specific app that you just never want to close out, you can add it to the VIP app section. Just tapping on one of these apps will put a little check mark by it, and these apps will never close even when you close all apps using the tap and hold gesture. Now, you can also set the currently playing app as a VIP app by enabling this little check mark right here. This makes it so that even if you use the tap and hold gesture to close out of all apps, the currently playing app will remain active. So that's a really nice feature. If you like to play music, you want to close all your apps. You don't want all these apps closing out. Now here's another one, another VIP app section, ask before removing. You see, I just enabled Cydia there. So if I swipe over and close out of Cydia, it will actually ask before I remove that app. And that's just a singular gesture, a swipe gesture on that app. It will prompt me before removing that app. You can also do the same thing with the currently playing app. So I'm gonna play some music, swipe back over, and then swipe down on the music app, and it prompts me. Are you sure you wanna close this app? And that's because the music app is the currently playing app. Now that about covers all of Auxo's settings and preferences. As you can see, this is a jailbreak tweak that translates really well, in fact, arguably better on the iPad with the larger screen, you have more real estate for the, the uh, full screen previews of Auxo. You have the bigger app icon, which I know will make Sebastian happy. You can quickly identify these apps. You have the multi-touch gestures for swiping down and removing apps, which translates better on the bigger screen with the more real estate. I mean, when you think about it, this app was really designed for the iPad. I mean, it's made for the iPad. The iPhone version is awesome but with the bigger screen, landscape support, you're gonna love this tweak. And as you see there, here is the landscape support that I know all you guys have been on pins and needles about. What's really cool about this, you notice it's in, it's in portrait mode right now, but notice the orientation of the screenshot previews there. You see they're all in portrait, but when you switch over to landscape, all of the screenshot previews switch over to landscape as well. Now, there is one caveat with this, at least in the version that I've been testing out. And that is that if you haven't opened a particular app in either portrait or landscape, it doesn't have a chance to generate a snapshot of that. So it'll only display the screenshot preview in the orientation that it took a screenshot of. So if, you, if it didn't get a chance to take a, a screenshot of both landscape and portrait, meaning you didn't open the app in both landscape and portrait, then it'll only have a screenshot for the orientation that you used. Now, this isn't so much a, an also issue. It's pretty much just like a limitation of 
the nature of the iPad. I mean, when you think about it, if it doesn't have the chance to generate a snapshot, then it really can't. But the folks are brainstorming uh, behind the tweak, are brainstorming ways to bypass this issue. So keep that in mind. Overall though, also for iPad is an absolute wonderful release. This is a jailbreak tweak that genuinely benefits from the added real estate provided by the iPad. And it also, it, it's been built from the ground up for the iPad. It wasn't something that was just, you know, lazily ported over to the iPad just to say, hey, I have iPad support. But this, this tweak was meticulously developed for the bigger screen of the iPad and it shows with the design, with the layout, the changes in the layout when compared to the uh, small screen version. This one is something to see in person. It's something to use and I think it's gonna make the experience on your iPad a lot better. Now with all this in mind, keep in mind that also is, you know, it's a 1.0 release. Uh, the iPhone version has had plenty of time to kind of marinate and get all the, the bugs worked out. So you may notice a few quibbles here and there as I have from time to time, but it's been it's not been a deal breaker for me. I think I've experienced maybe one or two crashes in uh, my usage with Oxo, and I've been testing it pretty extensively over the last couple of days. Um, so just keep that in mind, be patient, and I'll let these guys do their work because they are experts at it. And it shows with the marvelous release that is also for iPad. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.